welcome to Sail Hub. This week is all about sailing apps. And when we say apps, we mean apps via telephone. So we think that the phone has basically revolutionized sailing. And that's for cruisers and racers alike. So phones have got so much better. GPS has got better, Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth, connected to your instruments, connected to your boat. <laughs> All the tech's got better. <laughs> All the tech got better, yeah. And it's safe to say that we are never without our phones these days, so why wouldn't we be using apps on the sailboat? Yeah, that's true. So what we did was we put a poll together on Instagram, and we got a global response back. So thank you to everybody who took part in that. Yeah, thank you so Fantastic. much. And we have ranked the votes, and we've got the top five to discuss with you today. So we're talking... Yeah, we've got anchoring. Anchoring, wind, navigation. Yeah, weather. The, forecasting. It's all of everything, really. Anything the cruiser could want. Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> what became really apparent when we started this was that the amount of people that got involved in the poll. So I think it's fair to say that apps have really, really taken off. And the top five were miles ahead of the rest. Yeah, leagues ahead of the rest. So I think people are really trusting these five apps in particular. Yeah, totally. And on that note, the app that is ranked number one, we've got some footage from a sailing channel who rely on this every day they're going to tell us the ins and outs of why they choose this is their pocket rocket app let's say yeah so these guys are super experienced and some really good knowledge from them i'll hang around for that for sure so yeah let's get started we're going to start at number five and work our way up to number one all right let's do this ranking in at number five is a anchoring app called anchor <laughs> anchor it is yeah so if you're searching for that on the app store you need to be looking for anchor drag alarm it'll show up on there this app is available in french and english and it's free <laughs> yeah a really simple to use functional app for anchoring yeah. main features are obviously <laughs> dropping your anchor and uh, setting, a, setting a safety radius. Yeah, so that's done just with a mobile phone GPS, so it's linked to the phone, not the boat, so to speak. So you need to have a system on the phone, which, like your phone, which will data, do that. Data, data on your phone. Yeah, that's pretty simple. Um, so using that, you can then adjust the range, uh, sort of making it larger, and you can also make it smaller, and then later on in time, you can also readjust that if you need to. And you can also readjust where the anchor is, which can be handy if you're dragging or you're not, you're sure basically that when you put the anchor down, it didn't set where you pressed the button. So you can move it manually or take your dinghy over the top of it and get it bang on accurate. Yeah. The other really useful thing with this feature is that if you're solo sailing or a short-handed crew, if you're setting the anchor like on the phone from the cockpit, I mean, if you're in a 10, 12, 14, whatever meter boat, you're already like that yeah. much out. So you can you know, set it from the cockpit, but then just move it that, that little bit to make it yeah, more accurate. Yeah, so it's super helpful for solo sailors. Another useful feature in this is the satellite sort of overlay mode. Yeah, so satellite overlay we find really useful when you're anchoring in places you're not so sure about, you're not used to, so non-local turf, let's say. So we use it to find the likes of seagrass or really rocky bottoms, it's places that you might think are not really for overnight stays or long periods. And the satellite interface with this app is really good i mean we used to use um google and the likes but the quality is so much better we can actually see the floor let's say it's not perfect but it's much better than any other app that we've seen on the market especially a free app another thing that makes this app sort of stand out from the rest is its remote function so if you have two devices with data you can leave one on the boat and take one with you. So to leave this one on the boat, <laughs> take this one to the restaurant, and you can keep an eye directly on what your boat's doing. So you have an anchor alarm in your pocket when you're on shore. Yeah, so this is a really useful feature, basically a mirror image uh, of the, the phone that's on the boat. Uh, and it comes with various different alarm options. Um, so you've got a normal sort of acoustic alarm, but you've also got just like one where it just flashes, so if yeah. you're in a nice restaurant and you don't want to disrupt everyone, yeah. that's a great feature. Also, you can set it up so that you get an email uh, if there's an alert uh, going off about your anchor, which is really useful. But one thing to note is you have to reset that function every time you drop the anchor, so that isn't a set and forget thing. Every time you drop the anchor, reset if you want your email or not. Yeah, sure. So really, really cool setup with that. Now the app itself maybe could be seen as, let's say a slightly dated interface, but I think we can safely say that 
it's a kind of if it ain't broke don't fix it mentality it just works it just works it's so simple to to use and there's tutorials on there there's like there's it's just really clear menu system it's got a locking function so you can lock the lifting the anchor button which is kind of helpful yeah so you can't <laughs> accidentally lift the anchor which is quite handy if you got your phone in your pocket while you're walking around or using it for something and a little extra tip is that there is a find your boat option so if you've had a day out you're in a really busy anchorage or a good night out and yeah. you can't find your boat set it on to find my boat and your dinghy and it'll take you right there who would good. lose the boat <laughs> Coming up next at number four is a weather routing and say mapping options app, which is known as Predict Wind. Now Predict Wind is very much a subscription based app, but well worth the money. And it's also available in four different languages. You've got English, French, Spanish, and Italian. Yeah, so Predict Wind is basically offering you six global weather models and five high res models for more accurate weather prediction. But its special source is being able to take your boat your parameters that you set, so that's like speed of your boat, and also let's maybe go into what you want from your journey. So your, I don't want to say sailing any more than 15 knots, you can punch that in if you want to. It then creates four different routes to show you where to go and what your options are. I mean the departure planning feature which you just referenced is insane, like really handy. Yeah, yeah sure. And one feature that I find really attractive is the fact that they have daily briefings and this is pulling all this good stuff from maps and schematics and all this you know potentially quite complex stuff to look at yeah, into yeah, a text yeah. format yeah yeah uh, so you can just read it rather than work it out yeah and for those of you guys who are a bit more advanced or even maybe say let's say going on further journeys you can put your own boat polar details in there if you wanted to so that's like the angles and all that fancy stuff that you can punch that into this system and it will work basically exactly to your boat, giving you really accurate options. But the Iridium network is also giving you the option to update that route and your options wherever you are within the Iridium network, which is pretty much the entire world. <laughs> so the Iridium network, this app works alongside it? It does, yeah. So that's like using the likes of uh, Iridium Go or the Iridium Sat network sort of phones that you get in the likes. And is that using a SIM card? Yeah, so you've got to have a SIM card which is programmed to work in the Iridium network of which Predict Win can actually provide that for you. So that all works out within the subscription which is really cool. It's basically a skipper's best friend, right? Yeah, I mean you don't need the Iridium network. If you're within sort of local land-based network you can just use a phone. Yeah, superb. And uh, final feature but that is worth not forgetting is the uh, forecasting alert feature. So you can be alerted of weather windows, high winds, low winds, whatever you want, you're gonna get a push notification right to your phone. Coming in at number three is Navli. Now this is a cruiser's guide. Yeah, so Navli has got a free app and they've got a paid app. Today we're talking about the free app, plain and simply because that is what made it into the top five. <laughs> now this is very much EU based, we're covering five different languages, you've yeah. got French, English, Spanish, Italian and German. Yeah, so what it basically is, is a map of the EU where you can look at anchorages and marinas. So it's a colour coordinated map where you look at the place you want to go and straight away before you even open your destination you've got a red, green and an orange option which will be flagged up. Yeah, so that's recommended, okay or avoid. For sure, so you know if it's worth even opening up right from that point. It's worth knowing that those are real time, so as swells change and as direction of winds and everything change, they will change relative as well, so that's really important. And as soon as you go into each option on the map, there's a host of community members in there that you can hit up in the in-app chat and say, how, how, is, how are the conditions in there? What's it like? Ask some questions, so it's a huge, community-based app as well. Yeah, the community side of this app is what makes it special. But aside from that, we've also got the usual that you'd expect from a pilot book. You've got wind direction, you've got swell direction, protection in anchorages, protection in marinas as well, as well as knowing what the seabed is like and what the holding is like. So it's basically 
one-stop shop for sailing yeah. in the Mediterranean. You've got photos from people, you've got reviews from people, you've got the amenities that are close by, yeah. whether you can get in or out with your dinghy, etc, etc. Yeah. It's just so much information there. And on the marina side of it, you can look at all the different marina options, you can book directly from the app, you can yeah. tell all the amenities. Everything you need to know that you would expect to find in any other pilot book, it's all in here. Radio with, channel. Yeah, with the added advantage of being able to contact them directly through Navali, so you can send one message out to several marinas, let's say, and have them all covered in one chat for you, rather than having to send billions out. Navali does that work for you? Yeah, that's such a, if you're trying to be thrifty, that's such a good feature. For sure, yeah. Be able to buy the same oh, message yeah. out 10 times and get the best price back. Yeah. One last thing we'd like to talk about, we haven't used this option, but it's an SOS function that they've added to the app. And basically, if you pick your phone up and you're in distress and you press the SOS, it will alert a bunch of people within a given area, anybody who is using the Navli app, which by the way, is massive in Europe. So yeah, it's super useful. Maybe you're dragging anchor or maybe you actually have a, some medical emergency or something. This is gonna be super useful to get someone who's close by on your boat or off your boat or whatever. You get the picture. Yeah, such an amazing community app, right? Yeah, so good. <laughs> so coming in at number two is a weather forecasting app by the name of Windy. So Windy is available on a free or a pro subscription option. And this app has 15 different languages. So I'll save you from the list. Yeah, that being said, this is obviously a worldwide mapping system. So basically they take the world map and they throw weather at it. And basically there's hundreds and hundreds of different sort of situations and areas you can look at weather. They've got models coming out of their ears, let's say. And so basically we're looking at wind, gusts, we've got tides, you've got swell, you've got peerage, you've got pressures. Everything that you could want is on this app. So it's super customizable. You can see anywhere, you can see where you are, you can see the other side of the world, uh, and it's got forecast 10 days ahead, right? Yeah, you can have 10 days depending on which model you're in. And what's really helpful is you can set up weather alerts, and that basically is a push notification. Yeah, so you can use push notifications to warn you of bad weather that's coming, or good weather that's coming, so you might be waiting for a departure date. So you can have a, a forewarn push, that's really cool. So that's, Straight to the phone. Yeah, so that's really useful. And there's a function called Weather Archives. Now, how would you use Weather Archives? Well, for me, I would use Archives to look at pressures. So let's say we look at the barometer and I actually wanted to know what happened so many days beforehand. We can just go straight into the archives, pull it out, and then we know whether we're in panic stations or <laughs> it's been quite normal. Yeah, fantastic. I think how I'd use it is, uh, say if I was planning a chartering holiday, trying to work out when to go. I can look back on the archive to the previous year or even the year before yeah. and sort of see um, patterns in the weather, good good uh, times of the year for sailing or not because we all know there's cheaper periods for um, chartering and I guess the chances are those periods are, I don't know, hurricane season or just really bad weather. Yeah, no one so. wants to get caught in hurricane season. Like, and, and moving on from hurricanes, there's also something like an active track in this. Yeah. And so active tracking is basically a radar which tracks, you can use it to track bad weather, you can use it to track good weather. So basically if you've got no wind, you can use it to find wind. And if you're worried about bad wind, you can watch the radar to see where it's coming and how it's going to affect you. So that's really useful for cutting down on your, your engine miles, mm -hmm. reducing all that diesel that you're chugging out. Yeah. And um, I think, Last feature that I don't want these guys to miss out on is the function that's only available on a laptop, which is oh, 3D okay. mode. Yeah, so 3D mode is like a spherical view of the world with the weather plastered all over it. Whether or not you find that <laughs> useful or not, I don't know, but I think it's pretty high it's chance. It's really cool. Yeah, it's just cool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so the amount of data that's crammed into this app, Wendy, is insane. Yeah, it's really good. There you go. So coming in hot for a number one position in our poll is a navigational app and that's Navionics. Not surprised there. <laughs> so this is a one year subscription model and comes in five different languages, English, French, Italian, German and Spanish. Sure. And so as we promised, we've got a YouTube channel that's going to give us their thoughts on Navionics as an app and why they use it. 
That channel is Intrepid Bear, so hang around for them coming up in just a couple of minutes. So as an overview, Navionics is basically worldwide charts, right? Yeah, so it's worldwide topography, everything you would expect from a paper chart on a digital chart. Looking just like a normal chart, when we zoom in, we've got contour lines, you've got anchorages marked, but even better than a paper chart, we can pull tides up, we can use it to plot where we're going, we can have an automated plotting system on there if you want to use that let's say you can look at anchorages you can pull up aerial views you can pull up satellite views such a useful piece of kit now depending on how much you want to spend on your subscription depends on what you get but what i'd say is even with a basic one that's all we use these days and it's more than enough yeah and the fact that it's number one here it just shows goes to show how much people trust it and a big part of that is probably down to the fact that it's like it has daily updates so yeah. i mean that's so valuable compared to paper charts yeah daily updates obviously massively massively important um but for me the fact that you can use it offline is super important so being able to use it offline means it's always there on the phone i don't have to have internet connection or anything like that as long as i've got gps connection to the phone which is pretty much everywhere we use the boat these days it's just there. It's a backup if something else was to fail and it's just good to have. Yeah, and in terms of accuracy, a big part of that again is due to sonar charts from other boats, right? Yeah, yeah. So rather than just having normal contours done with a lead line and, you know, mapped out in that way, a bit old fashioned, let's say, Navionics are using everyone else's sonars if you allow it. So your sonar on your boat is taking time, depth and GPS location and being able to funnel it together and send it to the Navionics database, which they can therefore update the charts relevant to tidal data for the area as well. So the accuracy is just getting better and better. The more people use it, the better it will continue to get. <laughs> Power of the people. Yeah. And on that note, there is a function feature sort of called connectivity or connection. And that is to do with sort of hooking up with your friends on the water, which is really cool. Yeah. You can send them your tracker even better. You can send them a live tracker so they can hunt you down. You can send share markers as to where you want to meet. Yeah, and you can upload GPX files and you can download GPX files. This basically means you can share everything. You know, or you can plot on your mobile devices and upload it to your chart plotters. It's a completely integrated system, basically. And on that connectivity note, you can also link your phone to your chart plotter to share that and use your phone or your tablet, say, as a chart plotter. And you can actually put AIS on your on mobile device your through that connectivity from your boat, as so long as you have the connectivity and you have the AIS, AIS on your boat. So really cool setup, eh? Yeah, but enough about that from us. We're going to hand you over to Intrepid Bear to, for their insight in the app. To the bear. So hi, I'm uh, Ian, and with my wife Kate, who you see in a minute, we sail uh, Niad 391 Intrepid Bear, um, and we're currently sailing around the Med. Full-time cruisers, full-time liverboard, sailing around the Med, heading back up north towards the UK and North Europe. Um, we tend to use Navionics, the app, on our phones and on the iPad. Um, I've used Navionics as an app for many, many years. I used to be an instructor and it was always handy. It's just useful. You've got like a chart plotter in your pocket. So it's got everything on it, just like a real chart plotter. Um, there's tides are there, which is really useful. You can have a quick check on the tides. Um, we use it as like a secondary backup system to our main plotter. So we just have a quick look at any time we want. And you use it for sort of double checking Check meters. Yeah, double checking when you've plotted a course or, you know, if we're coming in somewhere and I think, oh, has he seen that? Has he zoomed in? Has he checked? Yeah. And also, um, if we go out on a dinghy mission, we call them and take the dinghy off and go exploring. Obviously, you've got the charts with us there and then. We can see what's navigable and what isn't. Um, so it's yeah. really handy for that. Yeah, it's really useful. I mean, I used to use it when I was instructing. I'd be sat at the back of the boat. I wouldn't be on the charts where the students were, but I could have a quick check of where we were going. Likewise, if I'm down below, if uh, Kate's on watch, I just want to check something, then it's all there. It's right in my pocket, instant, live, up to date. But the one thing I would say about Navionics and any other app, or one thing to be wary of, is don't put all your eggs in one basket. So if you um, check the tide on Navionics, and it says that there is enough water, see if you can double check it with another source, um, just to make sure it's right, because you don't really want to try and rely on one source of information all the time. 
So that's a useful thing to remember when you're using any navigation app really, including your chart plotter. So a big thanks to Intrepid Bird. They have their own sailing channel. You should check that out. The link is in the description. Yeah, these guys are super, super genuine, really nice guys. And the thing is they've got so much time on the water and so much knowledge, that channel is probably worth a look, I would say. And if you guys have any apps that you think should have featured in the top five, then we would sure like to check them out and I'm sure the community would as well. So drop them in the comments and everyone can see. Absolutely, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, feel free to hit the dislike button twice and then give us a subscribe as well. We'd bing, really, bing, bing. really appreciate it, make all the difference. <laughs> Thanks guys. Ha <laughs> ha.